I'm Cindy Lambden. I'd like to welcome you back to Continuous Decision Improvement. We're going to move right into part two, which is about doing. In our last section, we talked about planning a process and bringing it forward so that we could make a decision. So now we're actually going to take our scenario and actually move it forward. What I'd like to do is refresh you as to what that scenario is. You have been given the challenge of trying to find out which platform is a better cell phone platform. Is it iOS 7, which is iPhone, or is it Android? You as a planning group went into a process and actually determined how you were going to plan during the last segment. What we're going to do now is take that planning that you put into place and we're going to put it into action. So what we want to do is go to the due process. Now you as the leader, it's very important that you know what you want to achieve here. As a reminder, very important, you want to maximize the cognitive conflict, which is keep your team focused on ideas and thoughts. You want to minimize the emotional conflict, which means that you want to keep people who have differing ideas from focusing on each other, but again, staying focused on the task at hand. You want to ensure as the leader that your group has a maximum of shared understanding, and you also want to build commitment as we're going through this process. This is your opportunity to actually build consensus and commitment and minimize resistance. The last thing that you want is for your team to go out the door and all of a sudden there's undermining and undercutting the process because someone is resisting the decision that you as a group came to as a whole. So, how are we going to define the problem? Now, if you'll remember in the plan component, you started to define the problem. However, what was the issue was that you didn't have enough information from the information technology group in order to be able to do that. So, what you need to do first is actually take your stakeholders, bring them together for them to brainstorm what the issues are, for them to tell and share their personal experiences as to what issues and problems that they have had using cell phones. But it isn't just focused on the personal aspect. It's important that you get them to focus on the crisis intervention communications. What problems are they having during a time of crisis or during a time of disaster? Because that's where we really need to focus this discussion too. Brainstorming is one of the most common methods for getting people to open up, to just put their information out there. Let it be a free for all, if you will, but somewhat controlled because you don't want some people to get out of control within the group. Other mechanisms that have been used and are very commonplace are the Ishikawa fishbone diagram. And what that is, is a cause and effect diagram where you can actually lay down the information on lines to look at all of the interdependencies. We're not focusing on that today. That process actually takes a little longer, but the one that we are going to leverage and use is the five whys. Once the group has brainstormed, what you want to do is take the most common issues and cluster them together as a group. And then within those clusters, we want you to actually uh, figure out which ones are the most important. And from there, you drill it down. You drill it down with the five whys. Now, what the group has decided is that the perceived problem is inconsistent cell coverage during emergencies. That's what they think it is. But what's important is how to drill it down a little tighter. Is this the real problem or is it truly just a perceived problem? So you start doing the five whys. And the five whys are so simple, it doesn't require anything other than a piece of paper and a pen to write it down. So you want to go, why is inconsistent coverage 
during emergencies a problem. We have to respond to disasters. Well, why is that a problem? Because it's our department's mission as preparedness people to respond and the public health depends on us. You continue to drill it down and this group that actually worked on this problem, by the time they got to the fifth why, this is what that result was. Movement of public health information is critical to identify issues and implement strategies to mitigate public health crisis events. That is truly where the rubber meets the road. Now, I think you can see that if you were to do the five whys a little too early in a process, it may narrow the issue too early. So you do need to take the time to do some brainstorming. Pull that collective information from your stakeholder group and then cluster, refocus, refine, and do the five whys. Ultimately, what you want to do from that problem definition is determine what your objectives are going to be because you must be very clear about what you want to achieve. You need to know this so that you will know how to decide and define your um, processes to actually achieve these goals. So there are two objectives that really stand out. The first is to improve public health's capability to move information consistently during both normal and crisis operations. The second one is to initiate and sustain cell communications capabilities during normal and crisis operations. Notice there are two different moving pieces. One is about building capability and one is about initiating and sustaining. We have seen in our past real life events that there have been breakdowns in our cell communications uh, across the globe. We saw it with Hurricane Katrina. We're seeing it with a local emergency here that's happening in our state even as we speak but it's an issue that has to be addressed. So our, our focus then has to be trying to find the decision that helps to minimize and mitigate this problem. So you'd have to come up with some creative alternatives. And unfortunately, in this situation, somebody's already told us what our alternatives are. They've said that our, we only have two choices. We can either go iOS 7 or we can go Android. But if this were a different event and someone else had not already preset those parameters for us, I suspect the group would have come up with, well, let's include looking at BlackBerry or let's include looking at the Windows phone. Let's look at different platform systems. And is there another uh, alternative that we hadn't thought of? But what we have to do is actually go through a process to create those alternatives. When we're looking at this process, we want to make sure that we're including components like brainstorming. We've already included it. Brainstorming's been included in, brain, in the planning component, and now it's being included in the doing. Another one that's particularly helpful, especially in a crisis situation, is called vanishing options. And I want to draw your attention to that one because it's really quick and easy to work with. People think intuitively. They make decisions intuitively. So in this case, when somebody just off the cuff gives you three options to go with, in vanishing options, we say the three options that you just gave us are off the table. They're not even an option at this point. Now dig deeper. Dig deeper and come up with three more options so that we know that those that are the easy, the easy ones to do, which may have been tried in the past but may not work in this situation, is very important to accomplish. And uniqueness is something that I do need to speak to momentarily. There are similarities between every crisis issue or every crisis situation. But in order to make our decision-making processes even more valuable, we not just don't need to just look at the uh, similarities. We need to look at the uniquenesses and then brainstorm around those uniquenesses to help make a better decision in that situation. Now, 
what I wanted to do was make sure that I show you what a consequence table looks like. And I'm going to show this to you in two phases, because what we want to do is remember what I spoke earlier about measures and how important it is to know what your measures are. So you'll know if you're actually meeting your objectives or not. What we wanted to do was take and show you what were the objectives that this particular group that I worked with on this problem came up with. They were number of users, the ease of use, screen size and cost, and these four feed definitely into our capability to move information during normal and crisis situations. But then to initiate and sustain communications, the two measures that really drove there were about battery life, both standby time and talk time. Because if our communication systems go down, they're not going to be of help to us. Then what you do is you take alternative one, which say that it was the iOS 7, and alternative two, which is Android, and you fill in this, this a particular table with the data so that you can look at it in front of you and then make a determination based on the data that's in front of you. And this is what that looks like. Now, I've taken the objectives off the slide, but what we kept in place was the measures so that you could see this. And what we found overall was that the platform user, the iOS 7, is only used for one type of cell phone, where Android is used as a multiple provider, which gives us a lot of depth. We also looked at who was more friendly. Screen size became an issue, as with sometimes with aging eyes. You know, this is a problem. You know, you can't see those small screens. So we needed to include that, especially with people we were working with. What was surprising to people was the cost, the cost between one over the other with two-year contracts. And then looking at the battery life and the talk time, when it came down to this, this was a very important component to the end user. So that when you've got a, a piece of equipment that you've got a talk time of 21 hours over 8 hours or having up to 390 hours of standby over 250, this was a huge seller in influencing the group. So when you do a side-by-side -side comparison, it would appear that Android is the bigger winner. And that is, in fact, what this group decided. They felt that as a group and with the data, that was being shown that clearly there was one winner that they were going to recommend for the next steps to take place. Now that we've made a decision, in our next video, we're going to be talking about how to study our decision process. I'd like to thank you for being with us today, and I will hope that you will join us in our next video. Thank you.